Welcome to Rich Conversations. This is our new segment, Rich Answers, and today we are being provided questions from Alexander Claudi, who lives in Athens, Greece, and uh, she was on episode 190. Very talented person, singer, songwriter, and we talked about the history of music. We talked about Bach. We really geeked out about Bach on this one, and she sent in five questions here that I'm going to answer, and uh, right now we are at the Chicago Athletic Association here in Chicago. This is one of my favorite spots. Isn't it nice? It's pretty nice, right? Uh, you can't sell, but it's really warm right now because we have a fireplace right there, and I got a glass of mezcal, and uh, we're going to go through some of these questions. So the first one we have. So Alexander asked, what did you study at the university? Something I notice about Europeans is they, they use the word university instead of college. So that's something I noticed right away. But I went to DePaul University here in Chicago. Uh, I moved here when I was 18 and I studied communication. Now originally, I was enrolled in the uh, College of Commerce and the way the School of Communication was described to me was business without math. And I thought, sign, sign me up for that instead. And I remember taking like the first quarter, calculus. So I took calculus again. I took AP calculus in high school and I got a two on the AP exam. And I remember there was like one last question on this like, you know, this test that they have. And it was like this sphere or parabola or something and I think I just wrote like I'm gonna be honest I don't, I don't know the answer to this and uh, I had to so then I had to retake it and I, I aced it but I, I didn't want to do math again in college so the school of communication was more like the creative end of business or like the the people side of business and that was a lot more fun to me so I went to DePaul and double majored in PR and advertising and media and cinema studies and then I minored in applied psychology. So it's really about like why people make decisions and communicating ideas with other people. And uh, when you're coming out of college, kind of the rap that like communication majors get is that it's it's kind of like a BS degree or it's it's like easy and it's not exactly applicable uh, right away whereas like if you take accounting you know there are jobs that are just like hey we need someone in accounting to do this specific thing so the skills are much more vague and abstract and you really have to again be creative in how you apply them so uh, that's why I studied at DePaul and I hosted a radio show with uh, Joe Anhalt, who's been on the show, I believe three times, no, four times. And uh, it was called The Afternoon Snack with Rich and Joe. And there we really harnessed our skills. We won like some award of like best studio skills. And we played just like songs that were just on our minds. So a lot of like, 70s 80s pop music and then we had segments like would you rather and beaver talk and uh all this good stuff so there we really like we were able to really practice um communication and things that i use now so that would be the first one so i, I studied communication at depaul university okay the second question that alexander has is did your studies help you to create a career or did you choose an entirely different path? I would say with this one, uh, you know, like right away, immediately, I probably took a different path. A very much a nonconformist path, path, as you know, uh, including living, a homeless in Chicago voluntarily to better understand what it's like and what people go through 
uh, to being a rideshare driver and giving over like 4,000 rides around the city uh, to bartending. And you, you notice patterns within these. When you take a step back and you notice things, it's all communication. It's all people. And so in a way, it's like applying it creatively to your life. So I, I feel like I did. And then obviously now how the things that we're doing, you could kind of draw that, that line that it has uh, helped me. But I, I think a lot of times people, they'll say like, oh, I didn't even use my degree or whatever. Well, it's kind of like, it's what you make of it, right? Why would you spend so much money on college if you, if, if you feel like you, you weren't gonna use it afterwards? That seems a little silly, right? Uh, so I think also subconsciously, just going through classes and just learning and uh, reading and studying, you kind of like absorb a lot of knowledge in the process. Uh, so I would say overall that I, I definitely do use the knowledge I gained uh, at university. All right, so Alexandra asks, you spend a lot of time video editing. Do you enjoy it or do you find it a boring process that you have to do? Um, I know the fundamentals of video editing and I've had to edit a lot of videos, but uh, Right now, I have someone helping me with the videos. Her name is Megan, and she's fantastic. And I think because I know Alexandra, she she makes a lot of videos too for for YouTube, and she hers are really good. You should see her like her whole setup is awesome. Like when she came on the pod. She's got this great like lighting and, and the whole ambiance with this like purple tone. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I know why she's asking this question, but I think it's important to understand what your strengths are and also what you're not great at and you lean into those strengths, right? And for the things I want to do, like I have to, I have to think about my time and how I use my time, right? And video editing is really important, but there are other things that also need to get done that if, if I'm video editing, I can't do these other things. So, and I think this is like kind of a, like you wanna work as a team and you have like an overall goal and aspirations for you what you want to accomplish and everybody has a role to get to those goals right and we each kind of do our own part right so we also have someone on the podcast or helping out the podcast who finds guests her name is Kritika and she's fantastic so she'll send me like a list of a couple hundred people to potentially come on the pod. And I'll go through each individual one. And the way I decide who to have on is like who I, who I would be friends with, who I think would be fun, who, who I'm just curious about and I wanna learn more about. So everybody kinda has a role. And we're, we're, as we grow bigger, you know, we're gonna have more people in roles that help because overall you want to take where you are and get to where you want to go and that is not just one individual that does it it takes a whole team and I think within culture and society it's always kind of emphasized like oh I'm gonna do me I'm gonna do it I'm gonna you know uh, I'm just gonna hustle but Behind the scenes, in order to be successful, it takes a community, it takes a team, and people working together to create that. So I, I'm very grateful right now that I don't have to spend as much time video editing.
Number four, what are your dreams for the future, professionally and personally? Professionally, it is impossible to communicate the vision completely about the future. It's being created every day and to speak to speak the aspirations about the future would hardly do it justice. So professionally, I think though, in the short term, what we're trying to do is travel and talk to more people all over the place and meet more people that think similar about the world and have uh, an optimistic outlook on life and we learn about other cultures and people uh, and we get paid to do it like a lot of money that'd be fun right uh, I think that's very soon on the horizon so I would say professionally within the next year uh, as far as like a lifetime though uh, there are no boundaries Again, when we're thinking about, we think very nonlinear and apply quantum theory to what we do, and that means infinity. So if you can dream it and imagine it, then it's possible. So what you do, and this is what we're doing every day, is just working towards that. So I'd say within the next year, though, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Personally, Personally, are we saying like family? I want to have a family for sure. Uh, I think it's a very, people that think long term often think about family and having people around you always that will love you conditionally and that like know you really well and everybody has different personalities and uh, you know, like I grew up in a family of six and I appreciate that experience and then having cousins and stuff. So I see that also in my future. The question is finding the right person though, right? I think that's, that's always on everybody's mind of finding the right person that you can like live cohesively together and create something new, right? And that's exciting. Imagine, like I imagine being in love, like kind of like a, like a, a drug, right? And you're just like, you're just able to like, always be inspired and always be driven to like, give yourself to another person. And uh, I think that's something I aim for and would, would certainly like to, uh, to experience. The last question that Alexandra has for us. Again, I recommend checking out Alexandra's episode, 190, and uh, we talk about a number of things. She's, she's so entertaining. She's like, she's from, uh, what, how do you say it? Zykynthos, Greece, and it's like an island. And uh, the way she grew up and just like how, how cool it seems and like, the lemon scents on on the streets and stuff in Greece. I, I definitely want to go to Greece. I want to go to Athens. I want to go to Sepolia in Athens because uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo grew up there, and I want to kind of take the uh, take the pilgrimage. So this last one is where in the world. Where in the world would you like to live except from America? I'm sorry, I read this terribly. Where in the world would you like to live except America? I would say uh, piggybacking off of our uh, question four answer. I think it's to be determined yet. I think. 
if we're approaching this scientifically, right, we have to go out and experience these, th these things. So a hypothesis. We should travel to places we think that we would like and then we would experience what the culture is like there and the way of living. And then from those results, we could compare those and see where we would want to live. I think off the top of my head, I think London would be pretty cool. I feel like I could fit in pretty well with London. Uh, I don't think New York. I love New York and I love visiting New York, but I think London fits the personality a little bit more. I feel like I address more like someone in London. Personally, I think people in New York dress dress bad. I think it's I, it's a little much. I don't know. I think London would be cool. I've been to Spain. Barcelona is probably my favorite city that I've been to. I wouldn't do Paris. I wouldn't live in Paris. If you had to force me, though, I would, I'd live in Paris. Um, Ho Chi Minh City was interesting when I went there. You definitely, when you travel, I think you imagine what life would be like living there. And we went to, on that trip, we went to Hong Kong, Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Bangkok. And I think of those places, Hong Kong was pretty cool too. Um, I don't know, those are some spots. Of course, I have to try out Athens. I have to experience Athens. Um, South America, I'm very interested in. Colombia, Lima. Uh, we got to have some people on from Brazil. I feel like I wouldn't live in Brazil, though, because they don't speak Spanish. They speak Portuguese. So I'm trying to learn Spanish uh, coming up here. I could get by then a little bit easier, I think, in the other countries in South America. In the U.S., let's see, see, what people typically do after living in Chicago is they either go to New York or L.A. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I would live in New York. I've, I've been to New York enough times where I've observed its strengths and weaknesses. And uh, I don't think I would live there. I love visiting there. I, l I love New York. But um, I don't know if I would live there. But this, I guess this is, these are all hypotheticals. So the United States, I like where I live. Like I'm, I think part of a lot of people, what I notice is that they're, they're always feeling kind of lost or they're trying to find a place that is perfect for them and a lot of times you have to evaluate what you have around you like what do I have here and I've gone through everything all the awesome things in Chicago and it's like I don't need to go anywhere I'm gonna stay here and then Wisconsin I go up to Wisconsin I love Wisconsin so uh, as far as my future goes I envision and plan to live this is like this hybrid life in Wisconsin and Chicago and traveling all over. So those are our questions from Alexander Clotty, uh, who is a wonderful person. She's been on. Uh, check out her YouTube channel. Check out the videos we have on there. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week with Rich Answers.